In this video, let's unbox the Raspberry Pi 5, look at some of the features and changes from the previous Raspberry Pi, and also essential accessories such as this active cooler and this sweet 3D printed slim case for the Pi. I got this 4GB Raspberry Pi 5 with the essential kit from Cytron for under 100 USD. So it's shipped with this uh, power supply unit, of course, for the Raspberry Pi 5 and also the active cooler which is third party but is compatible coming in with all the screws and the pads that's needed. The kit also includes Maker Disk which is basically Raspberry Pi OS preloaded in the SD card approved by Raspberry Pi themselves and this particular SD card is 32 GB and is perfect for most projects. Now this is the Raspberry Pi 5 in the original box. There's a lot of projects online to make this box into a Raspberry Pi case if you're interested. Well, let's open it up. And in here, you have this very special pin layout card provided by Cytron to help you through making and uh, checking out which are the GPIO ports. Beneath it, you get the Raspberry Pi 5 board itself neatly made with a lot of new components and features which we'll go in depth later on. Also included the official Raspberry Pi startup guide with the safety and user guide attached as well. Now we got the board out of the box, let's dive into the top features of this Raspberry Pi 5. The first thing that caught my eye is this memory indicator, so it's easy for us to see that this is a 4GB model. This Pi comes equipped with a quad-core ARM Cortex-A76 CPU clocked at 2.4GHz which can be overclocked to 3GHz. And over here on the left, you have the PCIe 2.0 which can be expanded to high-speed network cards and graphic cards and SSD as well. And down here, these two brown connectors are dual DSi and CSi connectors for multiple display and camera attachments. And on the bottom left, you can see there's a RTC connector for a battery and a dedicated UART that provides a real-time application and serial communication. Connect a battery to the RTC port on the left here and you will keep the internal clock running. Raspberry Pi 5 also improved all these ports with a gigabit Ethernet port, two USB 3.0 ports and two USB 2.0 ports. On the top right near the ports, you can see a dedicated fan controller which has PWM controller and tachometer feedback which works perfectly to control the speed of our active cooler fan which we will be installing later. And over here, of course, you have a dedicated power on button. There's also tons of other minor updates. And of course, with more power, with like three times to five times more powerful than the previous one, you need a more powerful power supply unit. This power delivery 27 watts power supply unit by Cytron is a compatible power supply unit that can boost up 5 volts at 5 ampere. And PD power supply usually can boost up to 15 volts at 1.8 ampere easily to provide 27 watts of power delivery. I'm excited to look at this compatible active cooler as active cooling is important to prevent thermal throttling when the Raspberry Pi 5 is undergoing lots of calculation. The heatsink is smooth and it comes with a 4-pin wire fan connector, two wires for the power and the other wire is for PWM to control the fan speed. The package also includes three thermal pads and two spring-loaded screws for us to easily install the active cooler later on. The active cooler is designed to perfectly sit on the board with the pins aligned to attach it. However, with the original one or the compatible one, many people struggle with the thermal pad placement as there are few chips that are lower than the main processor. So the thermal pads should be placed here on the I.O. controller, down here on the PMIC and up here on the RAM. By placing it this way, the processor and also the wireless chip will have direct contact to the heatsink while the thermal pads help the other chips to contact with the heatsink. The fast forwarded section is just me removing the backing tape um, to attach the adhesive onto the chip itself. Next, let's remove the fan connector cover and with that later on we can plug in the fan cables over here. Let's continue to remove the rest of the backing tape and with that, we can place the heatsink over it and it should align with the two holes that we'll be attaching the screws later on. 
there's no tools needed to attach the screws it is snap and fit design so just press it gently through the hole and you will hear it snap the spring will ensure that pressure is applied on the heat sink towards the chip and the thermal pad let's repeat it with the other side with that we will have the heat sink evenly across all the chips and the thermal pads now the last part is just to put this fan connector into the connector itself raspberry pi is compatible with any sd card that is class 10 a1 up to 128 gb a case is essential to protect your Raspberry Pi 5. I just 3D printed out this one from Thingiverse and this is a thin design with a space for the active cooler and I like it a lot. So I can just slide the board in and it made way for the entire ports and all and also the active cooler. So by slamping it on and I am ready to run my project. If you need to use the camera or the display ports, there's another version that has holes for them as well. Final two steps, I plug in the mini HDMI port. This one was from my Pi 400 and the USB-C power adapter and it's ready to boot up. So once it's boot up, you can see that the fan is moving but the fan will throttle down if it's not hot and we are ready to run projects. Thanks for watching this video. Please put in your questions in the comment section and see you again next time. Please like and subscribe for other types of videos like Fixed Hack DIY. See you again. Bye.